Income tax 2022-2023 depreciation of rental property makers and special depreciation part number one. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Most of this information comes from publication 527 residential rental property including rental of vacation homes tax year 2022 you can find on the IRS website irs.gov irs.gov support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it looking at the income tax formula we're focused on line one income remember in the first half of the income tax formula is in essence an income statement but just an outline other forms and schedules flowing into these line items one of those the schedule e it being in essence an income statement in and of itself with rental income minus rental expenses the net rental income in essence flowing into line one income of our income tax formula continuing on with our discussion of depreciation a very important topic with regards to rental property because the cost of the property itself is a huge cost one that we would like to just expense and deduct when we pay for the rental property but even if we're using a cash-based system the tax code won't allow us to do that forcing us to do an accrual type thing putting the property on the books as an asset and then taking the benefit of depreciation expense the deduction of depreciation allocated over the useful life so that's the general idea now we're going to be thinking about special depreciation allowance as we do i think the thought process you want to have in your mind is first what is depreciation conceptually with regards to normal accounting because that's the baseline and then what kind of modifications are happening when we get to the tax code so for normal accounting the concept would be if you have a large piece of equipment or a building or something like that it would distort the financial statements if we were to expense them at the point in time they were purchased because there's there's such a big timing difference as to when we actually used the property in order to generate the revenue versus uh, when we paid for them so the concept would be you're going to put them on the books as an asset kind of like an investment and then we're going to consume that asset with the use of equipment is is an easier example because it actually goes down in value over its useful life allocating the cost of it to the time frame we actually consumed it in order to generate revenue which makes the comparison of the income statement a lot more efficient for decision making that's the general concept when we go to the tax code we start with that baseline concept but then we, ha we have different kind of incentives involved. Our goal isn't fair reporting of the financial statements. Our goal is to try to pay as little tax as possible. And therefore we're gonna, as the taxpayer, try to take the depreciation, which is most advantageous to take the benefit as soon as possible usually. And the tax code needs to be more rigid in order to stop that. And then the tax code will be adjusted for things that that have other political reasons or something like that they want to stimulate the economy or something like that so then they add things like the special depreciation which sometimes allow uh prop some items to be more depreciated up front which would be similar to allowing us to just expense them if you were going to do that in the first place right and so that's kind of a weird thing it doesn't make sense conceptually from an accounting standpoint but it makes sense more kind of from a political standpoint and in in what they're trying to do that way all right special depreciation allowance for 2022 some properties used in connection with residential real property activities may qualify for a special depreciation allowance this allowance is figured before you figure your regular depreciation deduction see chapter three of publication 946 for details i'll say i think i swallowed a fly there or something i'm sorry but <clears throat> also see the instructions for form 4562 line 14 
If you qualify for but choose not to take a special depreciation allowance, you must attach a statement to your return. The details of this election are in Chapter 3 of Publication 946 and the instructions for Form 4562, Line 14. All right, maker's depreciation. This is the big one. Uh, that So when we think about depreciation methods, oftentimes for the tax code, we're thinking about some variant of the maker's depreciation, which is basically just taking normal depreciation concepts and then putting them into this more stringent code of the tax of the tax code. So straight line or double declining, those kind of, of conceptual frameworks. And then we're going to try to put them in the stringent uh, tax code system. All right. So most business and investment property placed in service after 1986 is depreciated using makers, M-A-C-R-S. So this section explains how to determine which makers depreciation system applies to your property. It also discusses other information you need to know before you can figure depreciation under makers. This information includes the property's uh, recovery, uh, recovery class, applicable recovery period, convention, placed in service date, basis for depreciation and depreciation method. Okay, so let's do a quick recap and then we'll probably look at them in more detail. So when we think about the depreciation, we gotta know the recovery class. So we have to classify the, the type of asset and the tax code is gonna be more stringent than the, like generally accepted accounting principles generally because that class is gonna restrict the depreciation methods that you can get it. So you have to get the right bucket of the thing that you have so that you can uh, be in alignment with the more stringent rules on the tax code with the generally accepted accounting principles if you were doing depreciation for general generally accepted accounting principles you would be trying to have your depreciation method that reflects your financial statements as accurately uh, as possible so they're kind of two different things there but a similar depreciation concept applicable recovery period now the recovery period is is basically how long like the useful life, you're gonna be depreciating or allocating the cost or basis of this thing over, and typically it will be dictated by the recovery class, the bucket that it's been put in, and then the tax code will give you uh, an option or very limited options of what your applicable recovery period will be. And then the convention has to do with uh, when you purchase something we can simplify the calculation instead of saying I purchased it on February uh, February 7th and then try to calculate the depreciation for the part of that month. It would be easier if we can just assume that everything was purchased in one date. So if it, so, for some property, it might have a mid-year convention and we just assume everything was purchased in the middle of the year, making the math easier. Or we might have a mid-month convention or we might have a, 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 a mid-quarter convention. So, so that's a simplification tool. Placed in service date, obviously we need to know when it was placed in service and that becomes a little bit of an issue sometimes with certain pieces of property that you purchase but aren't in use yet. Uh, basis for, for depreciation, so what's gonna be kind of like the adjusted cost usually is the basis, the amount of the expense if you paid for something it would be what you paid for it typically and what you paid to get it ready to, for use. What's the basis that's going to be allocated over the useful life? And then the depreciation method, which again will be dictated pr basically by the recovery class, the bucket that you put into it. And the tax code might give you some limited options on the method, which include things like pretty much like a double declining method, an accelerated method or straight line method, which is kind of like the standard. All right. Depreciate, when I say it's the standard straight line is like the standard for you to think about it. Like you want to first think straight line and then alter it to some of these other kind of concepts like an accelerated method like double declining. Okay, depreciation system. Uh, makers consist of two systems that determine how you depreciate your property. You've got the general depreciation system, the GDS, and the alternative depreciation system, uh, the ADS. You must use GDS unless you, you are specifically required uh, by law to use ADS or you elect <clears throat> to use ADS. So then again, normally we're thinking, when you think of makers, most people probably just think, you know, basically the general depreciation system because that's, you know, the default. And it's usually an, an advantageous system because it has the double declining for some pieces uh, of property oftentimes. 
but you have certain circumstances when you might be in the alternative depreciation system and there might be some instances where it would be advantageous to elect to be in the alternative depreciation system so you have a little bit of flexibility uh, once you put your asset in that bucket of assets. Right? Excluded property. So you can't use makers for certain personal properties such as uh, furniture or appliances placed in service in your rental property in 2022 if it had been previously placed in service before 1987 when makers became effective. So in most cases, personal property is excluded from makers if you or a person related to you owned or used it in 1986 or if your tenant is a person or someone related to the person who owned or used it in 1986. So that's like the cutoff when this change happened. However, the property isn't excluded if your 2022 uh, deduction under makers using a half year convention. So there's the convention, meaning we kind of assume it was purchased in the middle of the year <laughs> is less than the deduction you would have under ACRS acres. So uh, for more information, see what method can you use to depreciate your property in chapter one of publication 946. All right, electing ADS. If you, cho uh, if you choose, you can use the ADS method for most property under ADS, you use the straight line method of depreciation. So a lot of the times the maker's depreciation, when we're talking about like equipment and stuff like that defaults to the uh, double declining balance, which is usually good because from our perspective as the taxpayer, we want to usually get more of the deduction up front. Although there are times when you could say, I would rather get the depreciation later. For example, if my taxes, if my income is quite low in the current year and I expect it to be much higher in latter years, then my tax rate's going to be way, a lot lower because of the progressive tax system. So I might say I would like to defer my depreciation to a point when I'm in a higher tax bracket and therefore the depreciation will be more advantageous. But normally we would like to get the depreciation earlier because because time value of money. Time is money. We'd rather get it sooner rather than later. They can always change the laws and mess us up on our whole plan anytime, right? So we'd rather get get the get the get it done now if we can usually so uh the election of ads for one item in a class of property generally applies to all property in that class placed in service during the tax year of the election however the election applies on a property by property basis for residential rental property and non-residential rental property if you choose to use ads for your residential rental property the election must be made in the first year the property is placed in service once you make this election you can never revoke it so <laughs> make sure it sounds quite intimidating there but yeah you want to make sure it's consistent because the depreciation you can't like switch depreciation schedules you can see how that would be quite messy if you've ever if you've ever worked with these depreciation schedules so for property placed in service during 2022 you make the election to use ads by entering the depreciation on form 4562 part 3 section c line 20 c so property classes <clears throat> under gds so each item of property that can be depreciated under makers, so now we're talking makers and the normal GDS now, is assigned a property class determined by its class life. The property class generally determines the depreciation method, recovery period, and convention. So once again, each item of property that can be depreciated under makers is assigned a property class. So now you're gonna say, okay, where does this fit on the property class? What bucket does it fall into? Uh, determined by its class uh, determined by its class life the property class generally determines the depreciation method the recovery period and convention so once you've got that right the class everything else kind of the kind of follows right so it's, you have very limited options because the tax code is quite stringent uh, uh, after that point all right so uh, the property classes under GDSR, you got the three-year property, you got the five-year property, you got the seven-year property, the 10-year property, the 15-year property, the 20-year property, and then we got the non-residential real property uh, and the residential uh, rental property. I'm sorry, non-residential 
uh, yeah, real property and residential rental property. So those are the buckets that we kind of fit the stuff into. And then once they're in that bucket, then we, we have more limitations or so that will drive in essence, some of the other things we need to calculate the depreciation or populate this into the tax software to have the tax software help populate the depreciation and calculate it. Under makers, property that you placed in service during 2022 in your rental activities generally falls into one of the following classes. So you got the five year property. This class includes computers and peripheral equipment office machinery, typewriters, calculators, copiers, etc., uh, automobiles, and light trucks. So this class also includes appliances, carpeting, and furniture used in a residential rental real estate activity. Uh, depreciation is limited on automobiles and other property used for transportation and property of a type generally used for entertainment, recreation, or amusement. So remember as we look at these classes we typically would like to try to to have the smaller lives for our perspective from the taxpayer perspective is i would like to get the expense today usually if i could well i can't they, they're going to make me depreciate it okay well then can i get a special depreciation or 179 so i could still get the expense today basically if not well then no they're gonna i still have to depreciate something over a useful life well then i want the useful life to be as small as possible so five year, five year, as opposed to 10 year, if possible, if I can fit something in that class versus another class is the general idea. When you get to things like automobiles, the IRS is gonna be skeptical and possibly putting more stringent uh, restrictions on the depreciation of automobiles because oftentimes people buy extravagant automobiles and then write them off as if it's like they needed that to drive over to the to their clients <laughs> place or something which they could have done in a golf cart or you know or something like that so it seems a little excessive so the iris is a bit skeptical so seven year property uh this class includes office furniture and equipment desks file cabinets and uh, similar items this class also includes any property that doesn't have a class life and that hasn't been uh, des designated by law as being in any other class so it's kind of like the default class if you find stuff that doesn't neatly fit into one of these uh, categories. 15 year property. So these 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 two, five and seven are kind of like some of the more common properties when you're not talking about like big stuff, like the, the real estate, you know, the, the actually property itself and stuff like that. And then you got the 15 year property. This class includes roads, fences and shrubbery, uh, if depreciable, a uh, residential rental property so this class includes any real property that is a rental building or structure. So now this is the actual building now, and we're talking residential rental property this time. So this class includes any real property that is, is rental building or structure, including a mobile home uh, for which 80% or more of the gross rental income for the tax year is from dwelling units. It doesn't include a unit uh, in a hotel, motel, in or other establishment where more than uh, half of the units are used in a transient basis. So you have to get into that. You get into a little bit of the weeds in terms of, is this more of a, like a motel or hotel? In which case you would think it's more of like a business kind of thing that you might be subject to like self-employment tax and stuff on, uh, or is it, or is it going to be, you know, rental property? where you're not providing substantial services and stuff like that. Uh, so, so which is more passive, you would think in nature. So if you live in any part of the building or structure, the gross rental income includes the fair rental value of the part uh, you live in. All right, so here's a table of, of these items. So you got makers recovery periods, uh, property used in rental activities. So you've got the type, you've got the general depreciation and the alternative. Oftentimes we're thinking general depreciation in the table format here. So type of property, computers and the peripheral equipment, five year office machinery, such as typewriter, calculators, copiers. We've got the automobiles also five years, but we know there's, there's other restrictions possibly with the automobiles that we talked about, light trucks, and then appliances uh, such as uh, stoves, refrigerators, five year carpets, five, and uh, furniture used in rental property uh, five years. So note that as you're, as you're thinking about 
the rental property, sometimes you run into these situations where it's like, well, do I have to include this thing, like a carpet or something like that, as part as part of the of the of the building itself or an improvement, in which case I might have to like depreciate it over like 27 years, 27 and a half or 30 years or something like that. Or can I think of it as a, a carpet, uh, which <laughs> which would be depreciated over five years, right? So you can see how you get into these kind of situations where would it be possible for me to parse something out from a, a big structure that I'd have to depreciate it over a long useful life to smaller components, which could be beneficial and then I might be able to depreciate them sooner and you get in those kind of issues could come up from time to time. So office furniture and equipment such as desks, uh, files, seven year, any property that doesn't have a class life that hasn't been uh, designed by law as being in any other class, seven year, roads, 15 year, shrubbery, fences, 15 year, and then the residential rental property, building or structure and structural components such as furnaces, uh, water pipes, venting, etc. 27.5 years for the general depreciation system. All right, recovery period under GDS. The recovery period of property is the number of years over which you recover its cost or other basis. The recovery period are generally longer under ADS than GDS. So if I look at these and I compare these, some of the recovery periods are longer under the ADS versus the uh, GDS, which is another reason why us as taxpayers will typically want the GDS. At, and that's why it's the default because we will typically want shorter periods that allows us to take the depreciation deductions sooner than later. So the recovery period of property depends on its property class. Under GDS, the recovery period of an asset is generally the same as its property class. So in other words, you might be saying, well, what the recovery period is pretty much straightforward here for most of these areas because the property class says it's five year property, you know, if it was and that. So that sounds like that's the recovery period. Although when we got down to the to the residential rental property, it didn't actually give us the years in the name of the class. Right. So but a lot of times it seems a little redundant. So class lives and recovery periods for the most uh, assets are listed in Appendix B of Publication 946. See Table 2-1 for recovery periods of property commonly used in residential rental activities. Additions or improvements to property. Treat additions or improvements you make to your, depreci your depreciable rental property as separate property items for depreciation purposes. In other words, you put an improvement on like a new roof. It's not a repair. You can't, you can't take the expense when you did it, but rather have to put it on the books as an asset. It's not going to be included or you're not going to like add it to the cost of the building that's already on the books. You're going to make another item <clears throat> for the improvement. So the property class and recovery period of the addition or improvement are the ones that would apply to the original property if you had placed it in service at the same time as the addition or improvement. So the recovery period for an addition or improvement to the property begins on the latter of the date the addition or improvement is placed in service. <clears throat> My voice is going, hold on, I need some coffee. All right, I'm back, I'm back. Gotta take care of the voice. So the date of the property, the date of the property to which the addition or improvement was made uh, is placed in service. Okay, example, let's take a look at an example. That'll be helpful. So you own a residential rental house that you have been renting since 1999 and depreciated under AR, uh, ACRS, Acres. Uh, you built an addition onto the house and placed it in service in 2022. You must use makers for the addition under GDS, the addition is depreciated as residential rental property over the 27.5 years. So, so you would think that basically the two things would kind of match. You had the house that you were depreciation, depreciating, and then you did the uh, improvement to the home. You would think the two would be the same and they would, except for the fact that the makers came into play at a later point in time. I'm later than, um, later than now. <laughs> So now you've got the situation. Well, if you would have, you know, put the home in place, uh, the rental property in the current time frame, you would have used the makers 
but and so that's that's the method you should use for the improvements then would be the general idea or my interpretation of it which is the 27.5 uh, under the makers gds <laughs>